Matt Gates. Congressman, uh, thanks for joining us. What What's the end game here? I, you know, the American public has completely lost interest in all of this, and I think most people are just waiting uh, for the IG report now, what William Barr is looking at. But this part, what, what are your colleagues across the aisle trying to achieve here? Well, Charles, it's like we're going through Groundhog Day each and every week in the House Judiciary Committee. Committee, We're going over the same facts that were in the Mueller report. As a matter of fact, yesterday, Hope Hicks came and gave an eight-hour interview where not a single additional fact or detail was discovered. We just have circumstances where Democrats want to do a redo of the Mueller report. And I think they view the document prepared by Robert Mueller as the screenplay that they want to bring to, the li to life in the form of having a, a movie and having people come in and act out the various roles, but it doesn't do much to advance the country, and it doesn't seem to be moving uh, the fact that 60 percent of the country doesn't want to see impeachment go forward. Congressman, do you recognize on the part of your colleagues any fatigue on this? I mean, any recognition that, in fact, the public just doesn't care and they need to move on, or are they just entrenched in this uh, inquisition? What they're entrenched in is a political lose-lose situation because 70 percent of Democrat primary voters want something that 60 percent of the country doesn't. And so the political dynamic playing out is that more moderate House Democrats are seeing primary challenges for the 2020 election cycle where they're being hit from the left and put on the spot on the question of impeachment, and that builds pressure on Nancy Pelosi. Congressman Jackie D'Angelo is here. I'm just wondering how far you think they take impeachment proceedings, um, you know, to distract from some of the other issues uh, that are going on, and 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 how and what Democrats' involvement was uh, in starting the whole investigation in the first place. Well, that's really what we're working hard to uncover. And there are three le levels of uh, that potential criminal activity that Attorney General Barr has directed Mr. Downer to review. Uh, the leaking of information from James Comey and Andrew McCabe, the fraud before a secret court where all information wasn't presented, and then the corrupt origins of this investigation, tracing potentially back to the Obama White House. And the evidence that most informs on that piece are the text messages between Peter Struck and Lisa Page, where they continually reference POTUS wanting to be included. That was during the Obama era. And the White House wanting to be involved in the Russia investigation of their political opponents. Oh, so, so you're saying the Obama uh, administration, that, that White House, because many are wondering how far up the food chain this goes. Who, who's the highest ranking official that knew this was happening? Well, the, the best process to trace to get those answers is the process that allows Attorney General Barr to declassify information from the intelligence community. Before the president's executive order, you could have had the director of national intelligence silo some of that information. Now that Barr has universal authority to uncover that stuff, I think it cr increases the likelihood that Clapper and uh, Brennan will be ultimately uh, in, in criminal trouble. I want to turn back to Hope Hicks, uh, the former White House communications director, testifying yesterday in Capitol Hill. It was a closed door hearing. Hicks instructed by White House lawyers to not answer any questions about her time working for President Trump. Congressman, you said it was eight hours. I mean, what exactly do you think or what, what can you share with us that might have been going on behind those doors? Well, trust me, Charles, if there was any bombshell piece of information that Hope Hicks released, the Democrats would have leaked it by now. Uh, there was absolutely nothing probative or substantive from that review of the information. And here's the absurdity, the notion that like a dozen Democrats in Congress over the course of a few days of collecting evidence are going to get more information that Robert Mueller got with over $30 million, 22 months, 19 prosecutors, dozens of FBI agents, over 2,000 witness statements, and over 500 subpoenas. So if Democrats in Congress think they can do better than that. It's it's a it's a pretty fictitious position to take. There's Con an old Congressman, uh, do you think uh, the friends on the end of the aisle, the moderates, are now beginning to worry? Yeah, they may have primary challenges, but also they could lose the general election e next year. A lot of them are first termers. They're not mm -hmm. entrenched. They won in the districts that are normally Republican. Do they see uh, their political uh, life floating before their eyes and sinking? There is a great deal of concern among the moderate Democrats in Congress that 
no matter what position they take on impeachment, the end result is catastrophic for them. If they oppose impeachment, their own base that they need to excite for the upcoming cycle may be suppressed. And if they do embrace the poison candy that is impeachment, then uh, I think the president will be gifted a victory because he will not be convicted and he will not be removed. And he will yet again be able to say that while he's trying to improve trade deals, uh, improve the economy and raise wages, Democrats are focused on him yeah. and not the lives of the American people. You know, there's an old saying about uh, uh, digging a hole and not and stop digging, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, Congressman Matt Gates, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charles.